Hey there, hope you're doing fine. In that video, I'm gonna show the update of my audio reactive effects number four asset pack for Unreal Engine 5.2. So it's available for five, but the update is specifically for 5.2 because I'm now using a few things that haven't been available earlier. So I'm also gonna really quick go over all of the assets. So again, here are like in the pack number one, so all your active effects without any number. That's the first pack. Um, watch that tutorial about that. That tells you about the folder structure and basically how it's meant to be used. So this one follows the same concept. Here we have some tools. One thing, one actor for audio capturing, one for audio playback, and one for sampling textures. So if you have animated textures, you can take snapshots of them and then use that for other things. The first um, effect in the pack is multi-spline mesh warms. So let's take a closer look. You see here we have we have um, a spline asset. So this actor has a spline and the particle system is attached to it. So all those worms follow the spline, but with a certain displacement depending on the position of the worm. And each worm consists of particles of different shape and color and you can, if you scroll down here, you have, okay, that's the width curve. Um, and then you can set a texture here to define which type and color and so on around the worm each particle has. And there are also, yeah, there are a ton of other parameters. That's, that's the most important. So it takes the texture and applies that to the particle look and feel and the rest is similar to all others. So you can set spectrum behavior, sizes and animation and so on. Um, those are all based on that, just with different looks and colors. Then there is blind mesh tunnel that's similar, but it's just one worm, so to say, or in that case, if you look at, into it like that, a tunnel. So you can define the, the width by curve. So you can here, it's closed again, like this, but in this one, oops, it's gonna be open here and you have a toggle box for mirror and it can also follow a spline. Here you can see the spline. So you can align that to the spline how you want and the other one is just mirrored. And again, a texture defines how it looks similar to those ones. And you also have like this sign animation and for all those things, for these as well as these, you can select an outline and the wireframe for each particle. I mean, you can enable it and it will show for all particles or not. So not individually, but yeah. Okay, then those here are also based on, on these. So you can also make other effects if you play around with the parameters, there are quite a lot. So then these are ribbon tubes. So they are behaving like those, but without the particles, instead they are ribbons with texture. If you want to set the texture for those, let's go into it. Okay, so material that's it 
So if you go to, to this material, you can set the texture here. So you can just make a copy of that material instance, set in your texture, and you're, you're ready to go. Here it is. So none means it uses the original one if you override it. <clears throat> you can do that here, and you can also override the outline material if you want to. Okay, you see here are different textures used and different behaviors. Okay, then here we have simple spectrum analyzers. So you can select if you want to have lines or meshes or uh, just dots like um, sprites. Okay, and here these are tentacles that have rings of spectrum analyzers around them. And yeah, nothing more to say. <laughs> but that's similar to those ones, but they are a lot more interesting because they if you take a look here, so there are tentacles, but each tentacle has meshes around it. And that again is similar to the concept of those here, but it's just, it's like, I called it tentacle forest because they are growing out of the ground in that grid fashion. Again, you can use textures to set things here, color, sizes, um, reaction to the spectrum, and so on. And you can see uh, they are all based on one instance and they can look very different and you can style them a lot. You can even make a face out of it if you use that as a texture. <clears throat> and then there is the same, but just with ribbons instead of those particle tubes. Here you cannot use the texture. Okay, so let's talk about what's new here. So, first of all, uh, performance improvements. So, Ribbon-based systems can now also be on the GPU with uh, 5.2 and I changed that so you will have a performance increase for those systems and then I changed things to make it more usable in the sequencer and to be able to create looping animations more easy because all of those systems are intended to create loopable animations so if you want to do that if you want to ensure that it can be looped usually it should be set the way that it's looping already but if it doesn't or if you change something and it doesn't loop then you probably changed some um, frequency or speed parameter that doesn't let the loop finish. So you want those to be full numbers always. Um, in the future I will probably change that so there cannot be anything wrong, but I left that in there because sometimes you want to have more control. But if you for instance select it and type here, type speed or frequency so then you get numbers like that, let's go back to speed. And so if you want to ensure that it's looping, set all, all of those to full numbers. So instead of 0.1, set it to one or two or zero disables that animation. Okay, so, but now <clears throat> I also introduced or introduced they were there already, but I just added them to all of the effects because not all did have them earlier. So all those parameters starting with LVJ are uh, like master parameters. 
what you have here is let's start with that so that's simply the speed of the animation i've just turned it down so you can see it better and then we have animation manual if i click that that will stop so how to animate now by this anim percentage value so if i change that oops you will see it also changes here and you can use that in the sequencer to just draw the animation so you can draw whatever you want it's usually a value between zero and one so you can have a sine curve or a linear curve or just have it from zero to one and then start at zero again you have more control over the speed but i turn it off now then you have um, master emissive that yeah, if I set it to zero, there is no emission. Uh, one is, is the default. And then emissive audio means how much of the audio is responsible for emissive. So one means emissive is only driven by audio. Zero means not. So zero, all are emissive at max. One means if there is no audio, nothing will emit light. So zero emissive. So I kept it at a high non one value. So you can see it, but when it's dark, it still emit a little bit. So you can see it. Then there is fade percentage, which lets you fade in and fade out the particle systems because they are not just planes like video planes that you can just fade out by alpha, you need some way to let them vanish in space. So each of the systems has fade out mechanics. So, and the fade value goes from minus one to plus one and zero means it's actually running. So minus one is off before start minus let's do 0.5. You see it's that's fading in from the left. Uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, oops, wrong direction, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. So, and then we're here. And the same thing in the other direction. Oops. Ah, I think there is a... Most of them have this thing here, fade value debug. If you're... Yeah. It just loops the fade out and fade in animation so you can work on that and if you type fade you will see all fade dependent variables Oops. let's turn that off again okay and then spectrum to animation um each of those systems has two spectrum analyzers one for the whole system that can you can set to one frequency like the bass for instance and that will drive the animation so if you set that to one it's only pushing the animation if it gets a signal from the audio if i set it to zero it will just animate and ignore this audio this global audio input um, and th there is a second spectrum analyzer that is responsible for the individual particles. So each particle has its own frequency and reacts to that. And if you want to change those things, type in spectrum and you get a lot of parameters like you can disable it, invert it, and you have thresholds and you have a decay the decay is kind of a smooth thing if i have a large value then you see it's got a lot smoother here it's not so flickery anymore if i turn that down it starts to be more flickery again if i put it to zero you see it's just the raw spectrum and the threshold is another thing. There is one for the individual particles and one for the global animation driver. 
and that means how big has the audio input or how large in value has the audio input to be in order to do any reaction. So in that case, if it's below 0.2, it won't react at all. So if I drive that up, okay. Ah, I know what's going on here. Okay, let's let's change the emissive. So you see, I type in emissive and got all emissive parameters here. Okay, emissive audio. I want that to be one. So it's only reacting from the audio. And with the threshold, if I change it to zero, you always see something because there is always at least some kind of noise. If I put it to 0.5, there is a lot less going on. And 0.9, you will barely see anything. Okay, and another important thing that I added for the update is under maps, you find the movie render demo. So all the packs now include level sequence and movie render queue for demoing how to render music videos with audio reactive particles. So, you have the audio here and level sequence and uh, no, no, render configurations to use and the movie pipeline queue. So if you open that up, you need to load that level here and then you can render it. 